Uh, welcome back. This is lecture 17. So in the previous lecture, we were seeing one of the examples of, uh, uh, of biasing a transistor with a constant current source. And what was the motivation for that? The motivation for using a constant current source bias was that if we could bias a transistor with constant current source, we saw that the GM, the transconductance of the transistor was potentially independent of any threshold voltage variation and also its, its variation with respect to mobility was minimal or lesser than the case where we bias the transistor with a constant VGS, right. So naturally constant current bias is, uh, is uh, quite often the preferred way of biasing analog uh, circuit amplifiers, right. So uh, we were trying to see the reason behind, we are trying to see the reason behind why, uh, what is the intuition behind the fact that a constant current bias was able to uh, keep the GM constant, right. And what we saw was was that one of the techniques of using constant current bias or one of the techniques of developing a constant current bias was to feed the current source, right, feed a current source directly into the drain, observe the voltage at the drain, right. Uh, what happens if, if the voltage at the drain is uh, tends to increase with the voltage at the train tends to increase what information am i gathering uh, if the voltage at the train is tending to increase the information that i'm gathering is that the current that i am pulling out right so so let's assume there is a small small capacitance small parasitic capacitance cp connected at the drain of the transistor you need not assume this always, but putting a memory element like a capacitor gives an intuition of time, right? gives an gives a feeling of feeling of time. So let's assume that at time t equal to zero, we had biased this transistor with a certain VGQ, and we connected I naught to the drain, and the VGQ that we connected was such that the current through this uh, through this transistor would have been IDSQ and if I naught were greater than IDSQ, what would have happened? The voltage at VD would have increased, right? If ID, for example, if, if I naught is greater than IDSQ, what will happen? A difference current of I naught minus IDSQ will flow into this capacitor. So naturally, the voltage at VD will increase. So what if I only observe the voltage at VD, what information am I gathering? The information that I'm gathering is, is that the transistor is not strong enough to pull a current of I naught. That's the information that I am gathering. So if this is not strong enough, what should I do? What knobs do I have? I have the VGS knob to turn. Right. So, what, what do I need to do? We need to, if the transit, if IDSQ is lesser than I naught, I need to increase IDSQ, which means I need to increase VGS since SVS is grounded, which means I have to increase VG. Right. So, so in a, in a sense, if VD is increasing, we need to increase VGQ. So, then we saw that what is the easiest way to most convenient way of achieving that architecture? The most convenient way of achieving the architecture is to simply connect the gate and the gate and the drain right so in this case naturally we also saw that the transistor will always remain in saturation because vd is equal to vg assuming the threshold voltage is greater than zero right so which almost always is the case in the types of mosfet that we use so in that case your transistor will always remain at saturation and this is done using negative feedback right or uh, this is done using feedback why this is this done using feedback this is done using feedback because i am observing the output voltage what is the output voltage this is drain is the output voltage i am observing the drain and taking a corrective action at the gate 
okay so then we also saw that the vgs of such a configuration i mean vgs of this transistor can also be expressed as threshold voltage plus under root 2 i naught mu n c ox w over l okay and from this also we got the intuition that if i naught is constant right if i naught is constant and mu n c ox w by l is constant then naturally vgs will vgs minus threshold voltage is constant which in other words other way of saying is that if the threshold voltage changes for some extraneous reasons then the vgs will change automatically right if the threshold voltage increases the gate voltage will automatically increase in order to adjust for that for that current i naught right so this other way of saying the same thing is vgs auto corrects itself with change in threshold voltage and also with change in i naught right why do i say uh, that vgs auto corrects with change in i naught naturally i mean the same argument can be given with respect to i naught if i naught let's say for some reason i naught has increased right what will happen if i naught has increased and let's assume idsq has not then naturally the drain voltage will start to increase and because the drain and the gate are connected together the gate voltage will also increase thereby increasing idsq right so this is equivalent to saying there is a, a, a vgs auto corrects or auto adjusts or auto biases itself if you connect your transistor in this configuration right so uh, the example that you can i mean real life example that you can think of is uh, i mean completely non electrical example is let's say you want to buy a birthday gift for your friend you don't know what gift will please your friend so you can do one of two things you can either take a gamble right buy one buy some gift and give it to your friend your friend might like it might not like it the alternate thing to do is to ask your friend up front hey, what gift do you want if your friend yeah, tells you what gift he, he or she wants then you go and buy the same thing and present it right so assuming uh, that your friend told you the right thing to start off he or she will be will be happy with the gift right so this is equivalent to the example in this is you are asking the transistor to develop its own voltage in order to set up in order to sink in the current i naught your requirement is you need to sink in the current i naught you don't know what vgs to give right so you are asking the transistor hey what we tell me what vgs you want so that current of i naught can be sunk in the transistor says okay fine connect it in this format and i will give you the adequate vgs now you change i naught the vgs will also also change okay okay great so what is the uh, moral of the story the more why are you doing all these things we are doing all these things because in this case this is gm is invariant of threshold voltage variation right or invariant to threshold voltage variation and also gm of this transistor is yes, is not as sensitive to mobility variation as it was with, uh, in the constant voltage bias case okay so but note that we need to we need to ultimately make a common source amplifier right so in a common source amplifier what is our configuration so so let's uh, we know that our configuration for the common source amplifier is this we needed how do you bias the input we needed to bias the input in the first place with some vgsq 
and that DGS queue cannot be a voltage source, right? Or cannot be a constant. If this is constant, then you have trouble, right? The trouble was a GM was strongly had a high dependence on threshold voltage and mobility. So now, what solution do I have? All I am saying is that this VGSQ cannot be cannot be a fixed voltage, but the VGSQ has to be such that I sink in a current which is let's say equal to some IDS. Let's say this current has to be this current has to be I naught. I am looking forward to generating a VGSQ which is such that which senses the current I naught and gives me that VGSQ, right? So what is the new problem statement? The new problem statement is we are looking for a way to generate VGSQ which is exactly of the value required that is required to generate a current I naught through let's say M1 but it has to auto adjust with respect to change in threshold voltage or I not right so essentially this is what we are looking for and this is what we saw in the in the uh, 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 previous lecture right so what is the benefit of this if we can do this then naturally the gm of m1 will be invariant of any threshold voltage variation okay so how do i do that so what are we looking for we are looking to generate a vgsq we are looking to generate a vgsq whose value is threshold voltage plus under root 2 i naught by mu n c ox w over l right how do i generate that we have just now seen in the previous page how to generate that right and obviously we have to assume that we have a current source available because ultimately we are planning to do a constant current source biasing right so then then what how do i generate this vgsq let's say i take another transistor And let's say this is M naught, and the I, I assume that M naught is exactly equal to M one. They are identical to each other, which essentially means that the threshold voltage of M naught is exactly equal to M one. The mobility of M naught is exactly equal to M one, right? So let's assume uh, that we have such a transistor, and we plug in the current source and connect the drain at the gate what will be this voltage what will be this voltage that will be generated this voltage will be exactly equal to the voltage that is required that the transistor m1 is looking for in order to in order to generate a bias which is in which is which will give me a constant uh, which will give me a, uh, a gm which is invariant of threshold voltage variations right okay so which essentially means that what i need to do i need to essentially connect these two terminals okay so now when i connect these two terminals what is this vgsq vgsq is this voltage essentially becomes threshold voltage plus 2 mu no, 2 i naught by mu n c ox w over l and now you see if threshold voltage changes if threshold voltage changes uh, then then nothing changes right i mean this threshold voltage changes let's say threshold voltage increased by 100 millivolt if threshold voltage increases by 100 millivolt this gate voltage of m1 also increases by 100 millivolt right while keeping thus keeping vgs minus the threshold voltage constant or in other words thus keeping the overdrive 
voltage constant. If you keep the overdrive constant, I0 remains constant. If I0 remains constant, your GM uh, remains constant with respect to any threshold voltage variation. And and this this seems to be a good way of uh, good way of biasing your common source amplifier. Note that I haven't yet applied the signal. This is still in the biasing stage. Okay. So now I made certain assumptions. What assumptions did I make? One primary assumption that I made was M0 is exactly equal to M1. Right. Now as it turns out, herein comes the primary difference between a circuit design which is made using discrete components on a breadboard and a circuit that is made in an integrated in a, in, in a wafer in, a, in, a, in, in an integrated environment or in a, in a VLSI design right so what is it what is what is the primary difference when you are do when you are designing on a breadboard let's say you purchase one MOSFET uh, from your vendor and you purchase another MOSFET from some other vendor or maybe from the same vendor there is no guarantee that those two MOSFETs will have identical characteristics right so however in a in a in an integrated circuit environment as it turns out in a very small area you can pack in large numbers of transistors now as it turns out the variation of threshold voltage within a small area is minimal similarly the variation of mobility within a small area is minimal which essentially means that there is a large amount of correlation or matching between transistors in an IC in an integrated circuit environment when they are placed very close to each other, right. Since there is a large uh, amount of correlation uh, the, um, or matching between transistors when they are placed very close to each other, depending upon how you put them in, uh, in an integrated circuit, it is, it can be expected that the threshold voltage of adjacent transistors which are placed close by uh, and also having similar sizes will have almost near identical threshold voltage and mobility right so this is the beauty of integrated circuits and that is why these type of configurations can often be used so there is one more nomenclature for this circuit and this is also called a current mirrored circuit the reason it is called current mirror is if you concentrate on only the currents that is flowing, the current in the left branch is I0, current in the right branch is also I0. If I change the current in the left branch from I0 to let us say I1, what will happen to the current in the right branch? The current in the right branch will also change from I0 to I1. Why? Because the moment current in the, uh, because the moment current in, uh, in the left branch changes, it changes the VGS of M0 thereby changing the VGS of M1 and how much it will change? It will change by the exact amount that is needed to sink in a current of I1 right. So hence the current in the right branch is mirroring the current in the left branch and hence this is also called a current mirror bias. This is also called a current mirror bias okay okay great so now we have i mean we have figured out a way of uh, biasing uh, uh, our let's say a potential common source amplifier in a way whose gm doesn't change with threshold voltage and, uh, and gm is quite less sensitive or uh, yeah quite less sensitive with respect to mobility variation so now the next question is how do i how do i apply an input ultimately uh, i mean this is the bias picture ultimately we will also have to apply an input right so let's let's see that so this is our the output side of the common source amplifier has n changed so the analysis on the output side is exactly whatever or the synthesis of the output side is exactly whatever we we, uh, we had initially uh, uh, we had initially uh, envisioned so, but now we have now we have a now we have a problem to solve and the problem is the fact that i have a incremental voltage vi and 
and the source resistance rs uh, i have to add it to this network such that such that i have to add it to the network such that incrementally the voltage that develops across m1 is equal to vr right so what am i looking for so let me let me remove this rl part because that is not giving me any extra information uh, for the purpose of this discussion uh, and unnecessarily taking up a lot of space let me remove that so what are we looking for ultimately we are looking for a configuration in which our common incremental model of our common source amplifier should look like this so this is rd So this is VG, so this is GM times VG or GM times VI. This is what we want, right? Incrementally, this is the gate should, I mean, the source should be shorter, right? This is we want. So the question is, how do I, how do I, where do I connect this VI and RS? Now, clearly, this VI and RS has to be connected at the gate of M1. There is no doubt about that because ultimately, this here we see this VI and RS being connected to the gate. I mean, that's what a common source amplifier is, where the input is applied between the gate and the and the source. So, so let's do that. So, what happens if I let's say I put RS uh, here, and let's say I, I I connect it here, right, right, okay. So now, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, will this work or will this cause a problem? So now, moment you edit a circuit, right? Moment you change a circuit by connecting something to somewhere, you have to go back and do two things. You have to go and see whether it has changed its quiescent biases, right? Because ultimately, if the quiescent biases changes, then I mean, nothing will work. And number two is to see whether it satisfies the incremental picture, right? So the, let's see. Let's see uh, if the quiescent bias has changed, right? So in order to figure out if the quiescent bias has changed, what do I need to do? I need to null the any incremental signal. So I I I ground RS, right? I ground this part. What do you think has quiescent bias changed? Clearly, it has changed because when RS was not when when uh, uh, this extra contraption was not there. What was the current that was flowing? So let me connect it here. Then I'll, I'll be able to make the point in a better way. So what was the current that was flowing through this branch when RS was not present? When RS was absent, right when rs was absent this current was clearly zero right because uh, into the gate of m1 we were seeing a capacitor since the capacitor gives you uh, infinite impedance at dc so this current was zero now what's going to happen now we have an rs what's going to happen now depending on the value of rs there will be a current division so some part of i naught so let's say alpha times i naught will flow into flow into rs i mean you can very accurately find out uh, what is alpha and i why not uh, you can simply write out the equations right so so let's assume that if you have a if this develops a voltage vg right if de this develops a voltage vg the current through m not will be current through m not will be half nu n c ox w over l pg minus threshold voltage all squared and the current through rs will be vg plus rs vg over rs so vg over rs this has to be equal to i naught and then you, this is a quadratic equation you solve the quadratic equation and you will get a value of vg but the key thing to note is that the current i naught is not flowing into m naught only current i naught is flowing into rs also and if the value of rs is small then most of this current i naught will flow into rs right and naturally the current into m naught will become much smaller than i naught 
naturally if the current into m0 becomes much smaller than i0 the current in m1 will also become much smaller than i0 because m0 and m1 are are current mirror circuits okay so we cannot do this so what's the what what will be the solution so we already have done this in other perspective in other uh, cases where we don't want a dc current to flow right so what do we what is the issue we don't want any dc current so we have this rs we have this contraption of rs and vi and we don't want any dc current to flow so what contraption can you think of that prevents a dc current from flowing clearly a capacitance will will do the job right so let's put the capacitance let's put the capacitance so if i put a capacitance and i mean let's call this capacitance c infinity right let's let's call it c1 for the time being then we'll call it c infinity later right if i have if i put this capacitance c1 right so then does it disturb the bias point of m0 and m1 clearly it does not right uh, because now all the current still that all the all of i0 flows into m0 creates the appropriate voltage uh, to uh, at the gate of m1 which is required to set up the current of i0 in m1 so this current still remains i0 so good right so this is good news right so what about so this is as far as uh, the biasing picture is concerned what about the incremental picture so what is again what is the goal the goal is to ensure that we have to design it in such a way that this voltage is almost equal to vi right ultimately we want i ultimately we want this configuration to get materialized right so our goal is again still to ensure that the gate voltage of m1 is almost equal to vi so which essentially means that we have to figure out if there is uh, if there is a if there is a loading effect in the in the incremental picture right so if let's say no current were being no incremental current were being drawn uh, through this path right so let's say this is i in if i in incrementally were zero right if i in were zero then vg would be equal to vi yeah. right so let me write it down if i in is almost equal to zero then vg will naturally be equal to vi yeah. this is our goal then right so we have to ensure that we have to ensure that nothing loads nothing loads this contraption of nothing loads this contraption of vi and rs right nothing loads this contraption of vi and rs if something loads this contraption of vi and rs which means that in the incremental picture i will have in the incremental picture i will have some loading which means vg will not be equal to vi right which means i will not be getting an output current of gm times vi right so so then let's figure out whether this is loading or not right so how can i figure this out so let's go to the next page okay so let's see this in the incremental picture what is vg how will i know what is vg in the incremental picture so clearly first thing we have to see is what is the impedance looking into the node vg correct so we have a capacitor so we are interested to find out what is the impedance looking in right so is this infinity or is this something else so let's see right let's do an analysis and see so what should i do assuming that i mean m1 is in i mean uh, i mean we don't have to assume anything so let's do the uh, brute force analysis and see right so what will be the what will be the impedance to the right into the gate of m1 is infinity so we don't have to bother right so it's almost as if m1 doesn't exist what is the impedance to the left so this we have to see right now if you see it's not going to the it's not only going to the gate right looking to the left 
I mean, looking this side. Right. So, so we are not only seeing the gate of a transistor. We are not only seeing the gate of M naught. We are also seeing the drain of M naught. So then, and the drain, gate and the drain are connected. So we will have to do an analysis to see whether uh, what is the impedance looking to the left. So what will be the impedance? So let's let's do let's let's replace the uh, the contraption of M naught. So M naught again it's in saturation. So I can replace the source is grounded. Right, so source is grounded. So this this is GM times whatever the VG is, right? So this is drain, right? So this is this is the drain. So this was the drain, right? What about the current source? What should I do with the current source? So the current source here clearly goes off because in an incremental sense the uh, the constant current source is an open circuit right what about the gate clearly the drain and the gate are connected together because that's how it is connected in case of uh, m naught so this is gm naught bg not gm bg because uh, i mean i had wanted to distinguish between gm not uh, m naught and m1 transistor and what are we looking for? We are looking for what is the impedance looking in. So how do I find out impedance? We have done it multiple times before. So let's put in a test voltage, right? If I put in a test voltage and I try to figure out what is the test current, the ratio of V test or I test will be my impedance. So if I put in a test voltage, what is VG? VG is V test. So what is this current? This current is GM naught V test. So this current is equal to I test. So I test is equal to GM naught V test, which means what? Which means V test over I test is equal to one over one over GM naught, right? So which means this is the this is the R in. This is this R in. And you see this this R in is is far from being infinity, right? If we if we desire large values of GM in order to desire large gain, then clearly you see that one over GM naught will not be large if GM naught is large, right? So so this so if I connect this contraption of VI RS and this capacitor, then it will clearly clearly load. Okay. So what is what is the solution? So let's let's see. So clearly this is not possible. So because this is loading, so to do something. What is the problem again? The problem again is looking in your R in is not large, right? So what should I do? What should I do with? Uh, what should I do in order to? in order to ensure that the contraption to the left does not load uh, load the incremental contraption. So what did we do in case of in case of a common source amplifier when we were doing uh, voltage biasing? We had put this R1 R2 contraption right we had put this R1 R2 contraption in order to what was that R1 R2 contraption doing? We were not fi we were not fixing the voltage at the uh, gate of a transistor with a constant voltage source because it was it wouldn't have allowed the voltage at the source uh, voltage at the gate to change. Similarly, if we if we assume that GM naught is very high, GM naught is uh, infinity, right? If GM naught is infinity, what is R in? R in goes to Zero, which means that if for a very large GM naught, this is almost a short circuit. Right? This is almost like a voltage source. So, what was the remedy in the earlier case when we are designing common source amplifier? The remedy was to isolate the voltage source from the incremental source with a with a resistance. Right? So, so the same thing we can do here. 
we can put a large resistance say rc right so we can so we put a large resistance rc uh, uh, where rc let's say tends to infinity right if rc tends to infinity what is the impedance looking in so clearly the impedance looking in now is what is r in now r in will be whatever r in we had earlier that is 1 over gm naught plus rc and rc tends to infinity then limiting value of rc r in when rc tends to infinity is infinity so then we are all good to go which means that i can essentially now connect connect the other side of the capacitor to the gate of to the gate of m1 without any without having any any problem correct so now we are not loading now we are not loading the uh, incremental source at all okay fine but now a moment somebody says that is something is infinity in the earlier cases we saw rc is infinity in this case uh, uh, capacitance is infinity in this case i am saying rc is infinity again rc infinity is not possible correct so just like a capacitor infinity is not possible then we need to figure out what is the constraint on uh, on rc c1 uh, these extra uh, components that we have included in the circuit in the network we need to figure out what are the values of those right so if we can figure out the values appropriately then we should be fine now note that we need not bother about the dc part at all because the impedance given by the capacitor is actually infinity right that is one constant that is actually infinity so the, since the impedance given by the capacitor is actually infinity we need not bother about the dc part we only have to bother about the ac part right so what should i bother about like before what do i need to see i need to see the time constant of the of the network right time constant of the circuit from the perspective of the capacitor okay so if i find out the time constant of the network right it's a single capacitor loop what is the loop incrementally what is the loop so so if i if i sketch this circuit once again so this is let's say gm not vg this is the drain drain and gate are connected this is vg then you have rc right then you have c1 then you have rs okay and we are trying to figure out the time constant since we are trying to figure out the time constant i got rid of vi right when i got get rid of vi which means vi goes to zero which means it becomes a short circuit right so now what is the time constant of this circuit now clearly in order to figure out time constant i have to see what is the thevenin equivalent what is the thevenin equivalent impedance looking from both the, both the terminals of the capacitor c1 right on the bottom side this is rs on the top side what is this on the top side what do i see top side i see r in right top side i see r in and what is r in r in is 1 over gm not plus rc correct so essentially again equivalent network becomes r in this is grounded you have c1 this is rs these two are rounded which means i can close the loop right so what is the equivalent uh, what is the capacity what is the time constant tau is r in plus rs times c1 right so in order for in order to ensure in order to ensure that uh, in order to ensure that uh, the signal passes through through the capacitor without any hindrance right in order to ensure that the signal passes through the capacitor without any hindrance what should i ensure so we should ensure that for c1 to behave like an infinite capacitor right 
we need to ensure tau is what tau is much much greater than 1 over omega naught where omega naught is the signal frequency which means that the constraint on c1 becomes c1 has to be much much greater than 1 over r in plus rs what is r in r in is 1 over gm naught plus rc plus rs right so this is the constraint on c1 that you need to satisfy but now you will ask me the question what is rc because how do i know what rc is also something that we have incorporated how do i know what is the value of and what is the constraint on rc and that would be a perfectly legitimate question and let's let's answer that also so let's assume again let's assume that you are, we have we have uh, been able to size c1 such that c1 acts as a short circuit okay so if c1 acts like a short circuit uh, what 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 does the incremental picture look like now so so let me sketch that incremental picture again so this side becomes rs and this is vi this is the node uh, that i am interested in right because i have m1 here on the left side i have rc on the left side i have rc and i have this contraption of of this transistor whose gate and drain are connected and what was the impedance looking into into this node into the gate of this contraption right because the gate and drain is connected this is it was 1 over gm naught okay so so essentially this becomes 1 over gm naught right so let's say vgm1 uh, we need to figure out what is the constraint on vg what is the constraint on rc such that vgm1 is almost equal to vi right so what is the constraint assuming c1 acts like an infinite capacitor what is the cons constraint on vgm1 so vgm1 or rather what is the constraint on rc for that we have to see right what is vgm1 vgm1 is vi times rc plus 1 over gm naught by rc minus 1 over gm naught plus rs right and if vgm1 has to be equal almost equal to vi what do i need to ensure we must have rc plus 1 over gm naught to be much much greater than rs or in other words we need to ensure rc is much much greater than rs minus 1 over gm naught okay so if we can ensure this then we are good to go okay so this you can all this you can also figure out without writing equations because ultimately what are we looking for if we say that vgm1 almost has to be equal to vi essentially what we are saying is that this additional contraption that we have should not load the contraption of vi and rs because this should not load which means its own impedance whatever impedance this extra contraption had which is rc plus 1 over gm naught has to be much much greater than rs right so as long as we as long as we satisfy this we will be we will be fine right so essentially what is what is the final configuration that we have a common source amplifier with a current meter bias becomes now we can put back the output side also
okay and the values of you by now we know how to choose the values of c1 c2 rc and so on right okay let's stop here